Okay, so I've been playing around with Bitcoin for a few years now and it is slowly gaining popularity, um, which is both good and bad. Let's face it, something becomes exclusive. I mean, no longer is exclusive, becomes mainstream. Some of the appeal goes away. People start kind of making it lame, but the value goes up. So can't really complain either way. This got me thinking about the basics, the core. What is the absolute minimum you need to get into Bitcoin? And I mean, a lot of people are pushed towards like Coinbase or Circle or these other um, wallet systems. But the reality, the entire thing comes down to just two keys, your public key and your private key, just like most encryption schemes do. And so I'm going to show you uh, a command line application that will help you generate uh, not just a custom key that's completely offline, but also has a vanity feature. In fact, that's what it's called. It's called Vanity Gen. Let's take a peek at this real quick here. So I like this because this kind of shows you exactly what Bitcoin is. Like, there is no fluff here. Vanity Gen. Now, all public addresses start with a one, and you get a letter. You can actually so you can have like words and stuff. The longer the word is, the harder it is to generate this unique address. So I'm just do one a real quick to give you a quick lowdown. Boom. So here is my uh, my public address. That's the one I share with people. They send money to it, and I can pull the money out with that address. And it's as simple as that. As simple as that. Do another one here. A R T because that's me. I'm Art. Takes a little bit longer, you know. Got to crunch those numbers. Um. Oh, let's see if it does it. And uh, there it goes. There it goes. Again, I did some really long ones before, and the machine just sat there for like half an hour, just working. And I think it was like five characters long. <laughs> so I usually just start with you know, uh, uh, just a random letter here. Um, you can't do two letters in a row. A num uh, alphanumerics in a row. If you do like that, it's like oh, never mind. Was it zero? Oh, the zero. Yeah, that's what it is. You can't do zero. So, yeah, and the nice thing is, uh, if you need to get these, let's say, let's say you have, uh, let's generate one real quick here. I'll do 12 again, but what I'm going to do is now I'm going to copy this, and I can use a program like QR encode. Um, that would be size 10, output private. Private, private, dot PNG, and then oh, that's the public. <laughs> I knew that. Uh, I know what I'm doing. Public, and then you can do the same thing with your private. <laughs> your private, dot PNG, and then you'll have two QR codes and if you need to share like you want people to donate to your uh, Bitcoin box you um, EOG the public one donate there yeah 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 I mean don't donate to that one obviously because that one's a it's a sp it's skewed but also that one the key is totally visible to the public especially with that there's your private key now what you can do is you can use your, uh, after you've collected money in that one, you can always use an app like the one in your phone, and you can just go what's called sweeping, and it'll pull everything out of that private key QR. And that's the thing, though. It will pull everything. So if you set your application to pull, like, two bucks, and there's $300 in it, game over, man. You pulled those two bucks, transaction's done. So let the app pull everything from there. Um... Again, another uh, tool I'll recommend is if you decide to have a public and private key, I think you should definitely use Ccrypt and use that to uh, to encrypt your uh, your QR code. There you go. Private's hidden, locked away, no one can get it. So, quick little recap to do fully, by the way, these are all offline. These can be, whether you're connected on the internet or not, there is a vanity, oh wait, hold on, 
There's Vanity Gen. Let's go back to the beginning here. Vanity Gen. Um, QRN code, which I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with. And of course, an encryption tool like Secrypt. You could also, of course, use a password protected zip file if you really wanted to. Whatever security you're comfortable with. And um, there's some really basics of Bitcoin. Like offline. Simple stuff. Let me know if this stuff was interesting. Uh, uh, yeah. And I'll try to make more stuff like this. Yeah.